प्लीज श्रीवत्सव शकलशोदिकौस्तुभ से श्रीवास राघव गुरोस्तन तत विद्या अवाप्य विबुधोत्तमता दधान पूर्वे सदा हृदय गुरु करुणाक्यम लक्ष्मीनाथ सरंभा नाथयामुन मध्यम अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा यो निमच्युत पदाबुजयुग्म रुक्म व्यामोहतस्तरा तृणा मे ने अस्मदुरोगवत दयक सिंधो राज से चरण शरण प्रपद्ये श्रीमाकटनाथार्य कविताकिकेसरी वेदाताचार्य वर्यो मे सन्नीता सदा हृदय Here is a quick recap. We saw about Kaivalya as explained by Advaita. Then we saw how the same word is described differently by Vishishta Advaita. Then we also saw about how in Vishishta Advaita, the supreme state of being, because Kaivalya has been reduced to an inferior state, the supreme state has to be something else. So how is the supreme state defined? that has been explained in very in very short words as per advaita swatmanubhava and paramatmanubhava are the same thing in the supreme state as a matter of fact there would be no anubhava itself because in the supreme state there would be nirgunatva attributelessness so it is a state where you have realized yourself completely so we don't talk about experiencing the self although such words might be used here and there the actual meaning is that once a complete realization has happened at that state you would be called as being in the supreme state as per advaita now in vishishta advaita it is not about just realization it is about it is about like after realization you do certain acts then you get moksha in the state of moksha you have an experience what is that experience this much is asked before explaining the state of existence now when it is done in this manner we therefore have different meanings for the words so kaivalya refers to swatmanubhava here the experience of one's own atma whereas as per advaita the way the word kaivalya is defined it is not even defined based on experience it is defined based on realization so there is a level of difference in the way in which the words have been defined we should be careful there and since kaivalya has been defined as swatmanubhava there should also be a paramatma anubhava and as paramatma is superior the paramatma is literally supreme parama itself means supreme for that reason we take it as the supreme state of being today i would like to discuss about something special as it is independence day we are going to stick to vishishta advaita and sanatana dharma of course there are several elements in every sampradaya that are going to be common across all schools but today the topic that i would like to stress about is freedom there are different ways to classify freedom one of the ways is to classify it into three what do you want to be free from what would you like to be free to do what would you like to be free to be in this manner three questions are asked they lead to three different types of freedom freedom from freedom to and freedom to be as an example we attained freedom from colonial rule correct we attained freedom from british rule we got the freedom to govern ourselves we got the freedom to make our own constitution we got the freedom to do lots of such things 
Now we have the freedom to be also in India. Do we or do we not? Freedom to be a Hindu or Christian or whatever. Freedom to be a shopkeeper or a, a, a person, uh, an engineer or a person, uh, maybe a pilot, a doctor, whatever. So there are different types of freedom. We are going to look at the, the word freedom and the concept of freedom from a Sanatani perspective. What kinds of things should we have freedom from as per Sanatana Dharma? We should have freedom from bondage, correct? We were suffering from bondage by the British. Likewise, as per Sanatana Dharma, we are all suffering from bondage of Samsara Sagara. We have a bondage, but is that the only bondage that we have? No, we have lots of bondages. In life, we are bound by a lot of things. I want to do something, but my parents are not letting me. I want to do something, but my friends don't want it. I want to do something, but somebody else will feel bad. I want to do something, but my boss will not allow me. I want to do something, but my class teacher will not allow me. In all such cases, where we depend on permission of others to be able to do something, there is a level of bondage associated. It is natural for people to desire to be free from bondage. But is there any kind of bondage that we need not desire to be free from? Could there be a kind of bondage that is all right for us? A kind of bondage that we love to be in. If such a question is asked, the Vishishta Advaiti would say, we are all always bound to Bhagavan. We don't realize it. We don't see it. We don't feel it. But the very fact that we exist is also something that is dependent on Bhagavan only. Everything is dependent on him. Therefore, we are already under bondage. And this bondage is eternal. Whether or not you desire to come out of this bondage, you will not be able to come out of this bondage. It is an eternal bondage that is there. Point number one. Okay. This is an eternal bondage. I cannot come out of it. I will not desire to come out of it because it is logically not even possible. What if there is some other kind of bondage that I would love to be associated with? Is there such a kind of bondage? The answer is, yes, there is. So we are bound to Bhagavan, correct? But expressing that state of bondage is something that would be blissful to us if we really know how to do it and if we start doing it, how do we know how to do it? The scriptures have taught us. And if we start doing it, it would be a blissful experience for us. Okay. What other bondage is to be respected, to be bound by law, which is logical and which is dharmic? That kind of a law. Remember, I am saying logical and dharmic. Dharmic does not mean logical. Dharma is superior to just logical reasoning. Logical reasoning will work only when there is existing information available. But dharma is not like that. So there are things that are taught by Sanatana Dharma that cannot be tested by us here. For example, the law of karma. But we do believe in it. So dharma is superior to just logical reasoning. Logical reasoning might be able to justify the need for karma. But logical reasoning cannot justify the existence of karma. It cannot even prove the existence of karma. That is something about logical reasoning that we should know. Anyway, so we should be Willing to be bound by dharmic laws. Why should we not seek freedom from it? Why can't I be free from dharmic laws? Hmm? Krishna told Arjuna, Oh Arjuna, it is your duty to fight. 
then Krishna also said Yatha Ichasi Tatha Kuru. When Krishna himself gave freedom to Arjuna, why can't I seek freedom and say, no, no, let me take complete freedom. Let me not be bound by the scripture. Let me not be bound by dharmic advice. What would be the advantage of remaining in bondage? The advantage is again karmic. If we are bound by the laws of dharma, then dharmo rakshati rakshitaha. Correct? If we choose to be bound by the laws of karma, sorry, laws of dharma, then dharma will protect us. We will get punya karma phala. We will get spiritual advancement. Eventually, we would get more and more pleasure, more and more happiness until we reach the state of moksha that is full of eternal bliss. Eternal and infinite bliss. But if we choose to get free from that bondage, then we might end up doing things that are against it. So if the Veda says Satyam Mada, we might think, what is the big deal? I told a lie. I don't see anything happening to me. But things will happen to us eventually. We may not realize. At that time, we might not even know why it is happening that way when we are suffering. We may not know the reason why we are suffering. But that would happen. So for the greater good of ourselves, we should want to remain bound by the dharmic laws, the dharmic rules. What else should we be bound by? We should be bound by Bhagavan. We are already bound by him and we are bound eternally. We should be bound by dharmic laws. If we don't behave that way, we will suffer. We should be bound by people who are associated with Bhagavan and Dharma. Saintly people. Acharyas. Uh, Sadachara people. People who might not be at the level of Acharyas, but people who are of good conduct. Bhagavatas. With all such people, we should try to remain bound. Why? Because whatever those people say or do would be consistent with dharma. And therefore, if we are bound to these people, we would be bound to dharma. So, bondage is not always bad. In school, they teach it as though bondage is always bad. But it is not always bad. If I say that I am bound to the will of my father, would it be bad? Look at Ramayana. Dasharatha literally told Rama just before coronation. In some time, coronation is going to happen in a few hours. But Dasharatha tells Rama, Oh Rama, I don't want you here. Please go. Dasharatha does not say, As per Valmiki Ramayana, it is Kaikeyi who conveys it to Rama. Dasharatha stays silent. Kaikeyi says, O oh Rama, you go to the forest. Your father gave boons to me. As per those boons, I have asked for your exile to the forest for 14 years. Therefore, O oh Rama, please honor your father's promise and get lost from here. Rama said, okay, fine, I will definitely get lost. Rama says, and there is a very beautiful statement made by Rama. Rama says, even if my father does not open his mouth and speak, I am supposed to, as a son, it is my duty to know what he desires and do it. But my father has actually opened his mouth and given you a promise long back, although he might not be talking right now. He has given you a promise long back. Therefore, I will definitely keep up his promise. That is my duty. So Rama considers himself to be bound to his father's words. That is why we praise him as Pitruvachana Paripalaka. So this is also dharma. It might not be visible to us immediately. Do I see any good coming to me by leaving the kingdom, leaving kingship and being a forest dweller 
I might not see it physically, but there is a greater good there, which if not today, it will come to me tomorrow. That faith will come to us when we have complete faith in the Sanatani scriptures. So we should desire to be bound to elders. We should desire to be bound to saintly people. We should be desiring to be bound to the scriptures and we should desire to be bound to Bhagavan, which we already are. We should realize it and behave that way. Next come responsibilities. When it comes to responsibilities, there are people who seek freedom from different types of responsibilities. If I have taken a loan, it is my duty to repay. That is a responsibility. If I have children, it is my duty to bring them up. It is a responsibility. If I have old parents at home, it is my duty to take care of them. It is a responsibility. Now, are there responsibilities? So all of these responsibilities that I spoke about, right? We said that bondage is something that is usually shown in a negative manner. But there are certain types of bondages that are actually good. That is what we said. What about responsibilities? Whatever I say seems to be correct, right? It is a, We should take care of our parents. We should take care of our children. We should repay loans that we have taken if we have taken loans. All of that seems correct. Is there any responsibility that it is okay to be free from? Hmm? Is there any responsibility that it is okay to be free from? Ideally, the answer would be no. But in Sanatana Dharma, we say that following and making sure that we display responsibility is dharma. At the same time, there might be exceptional cases where for the greater good, we decide to leave one responsibility and go and take the other. A great example of this is in Bhagavad Gita. It is the responsibility of a shishya to behave like a worshipper of his guru. Dronacharya is there on the other side. But Krishna says, don't think about that. Yes, it is your responsibility to respect elders. It is your responsibility to worship him. It is your responsibility to always pay respects to him. But there is a greater duty. There is a greater need of the hour. There is a greater dharma that you need to do. Therefore, O oh Arjuna, because you need to take up some other responsibility at this point of time, which is far more important and far more impactful, you should discard this smaller responsibility. Not that he can use some foul language against Dronacharya or anything. That is not what Krishna meant. Krishna meant to say, it is your responsibility to fight against the Kaurava side. Therefore, even though Dronacharya himself is there on the Kaurava side, you should still fight. And you should fight him also if need be. So, in the case of responsibilities, there are exceptional cases where it is okay to leave some responsibility. But when is that okay? when it is done for the greater good. What about relationships? Freedom from relationships. You know, we have an entire ashrama centered around that called sannyasa. Sannyasin, they do not keep relationships, right? They don't have what? Mother, father, brother, sister, son, daughter. No. When they take up sannyasa, they are supposed to declare loudly that they have cut all of these relationships. These days, I don't know whether people still declare loudly. Now the population is more. The world has changed. We have also moved. We have changed even our speaking patterns. 
and move towards a more Western model. So we no longer speak that loudly or declare that loudly whether or not there are people. Even if there is nobody around, if you say that you should still go outside and declare by shouting, who do people do? People might think, oh, if I shout aloud and people don't know what I'm doing, they might think I'm crazy. Why should I do it? No, let me stay at home and let me just say, or let me just think in my mind. Today we have become that. way. But anyway, that aside, the sannyasi, the, uh, uh, the person in sannyasa ashrama is supposed to desire no relationship with people. What about property? The sannyasi should not desire properties. Correct? What about people who are not sannyasis? So, the sannyasi should not seek relationships with living beings or non-living beings. What about the other people? Should they also seek to cut all relationships? Bhagavad Ramanuja gave the answer to this in his life itself. There is a practical example. The time when Bhagavad Ramanuja took sannyasa. When Bhagavad Ramanuja took sannyasa, he declared that he is leaving all relationships except for a few. What is this except for a few? How is that even a sannyasa? If you are keeping some relationships as exceptions, those people if by chance they are your relatives, but those people who always remind you of Bhagavan, those people who always remind you of Bhagavan, they are good to have with you. It is a very good thing to have such people, people who remind you of Bhagavan. When I say people who remind of Bhagavan, I don't mean, oh, Kamsa comes, he tortures people so much that everybody remembers Bhagavan and prays to him. I mean, good people, dharmic people who encourage us to be more dharmic. They're just looking at them makes you want to be more dharmic. That kind of people. You should not cut relationship with such people. Which relationship? The relationship of being whatever they are to you, but they are dear to you due to dharma. So, it does not imply that we should be fully bound by whatever they say. If they tell us to do something, we have to do it. We become bound in karma totally to them. No, that is not what the message is. The message is that we remain in relationships with people if they promote us to perform dharma, if they encourage us to be more dharmic, if they themselves are excellent examples of dharmic people. That kind of a relationship will take us closer towards Bhagavan. So even as a sannyasi, Bhagavad Ramanuja had some relationships. These relations, that as he called them, they were his shishyas. And these few shishyas became the most prominent successors of Bhagavad Ramanuja after he departed from the world. I hope I am still audible. If I am not, please let me know. Am I audible? Hello. Yeah, you're quite clear. No problem. Okay. Very, yeah. very good. Thank you. So, you think, should we be free from all relationships? Had Shankaracharya, Adi Shankaracharya, had he decided to be bound by the relationship with his mother, he would not have been able to serve dharma in the way that he did in reality. 
That is the reason why he wanted to be free from that relationship. That incident of the crocodile in his childhood that was meant to take his mother away from him because otherwise she might prevent him from performing the level of dharma, from uh, serving dharma at the level at which he could otherwise do. This is what the teachers of Shankaradik Vijayam explain. Now moving on, society. Should we be free from the society? Should we desire freedom from the society? Here, there are two ashramas. Correct? There is one called Vanaprastha. And then there is one which is Sanyasa. In both of these, the society is something that you are detached from. Society lives in the village or city. You go to the forest, there is no society in the forest. Correct? That is one ashrama. There is another ashrama, sannyas ashrama, which we have already talked about. There also, you should be uninfluenced by society. But, what does uninfluenced mean? Do you just go away, don't care about what happens to them? Leave them as they are and do whatever you want to do. No, that is selfishness. You should not be affected by the evils of the society or the attractions towards the physical world that come from your association with the society. But the greatest of people, if we look at the greatest of saints, all of them served the society. All of them help the society. You help the so if the society is in trouble, you help them. There was a great disease once in a village. Swami Vedanta Deshika saved that. Okay, it might be argued that Deshika was not in Sanyas Ashrama, he was in Grihastha Ashrama. What about Bhagavad Ramanuja? Yes. A reform of the society, telling people that everybody is really capable of attaining moksha, not just a very tiny part of society, not just a single varana of people, not just a single ashrama of people, not just humans. In this manner, Bhagavat Ramanuja told very boldly, established it by citing scripture and he spread it as a movement to help the society, to uplift the society. This is what Swami Vivekananda celebrates about Bhagavad Ramanuja. Of course, he celebrates other things as well, but this compassion towards the society is highlighted by Swami Vivekananda. Now, Freedom from the society, therefore, means that you should not be influenced and start going towards the side of adharma. You should not get into any unnecessary bondage or relationship. But if you are dependent on the society, if you are in a village and you are dependent on the society, you should be able to serve the society in some way. I go to a village, people come and offer me milk, people offer me fruits, people offer me food, let us say. Let us say I am a sannyasi. I don't have the right to kindle fire and uh, cook food by myself. Then some other people, they come by themselves and offer so many things to me. I should desire their well-being. If I have great tapobala, I should give them great blessings. Or if there is some other way by which I could help them, I should try to do that. It becomes my responsibility. So this is a dharmic responsibility towards the society. As a matter of fact, nobody is born in sannyas ashrama. Correct? In our At least in our initial years of life, we are dependent on the society. I am dependent on the army soldiers who are stationed in Kashmir also. I don't realize it. But I am actually dependent on them. 
I am dependent on the government which has ensured that I am able to live life without any trouble of continuous whatever robbery and other such chaotic behaviors in society. But that is also part of society. That part of society which ensures that the remaining people are living in law and order and are able to do whatever they want. Why? I I'm, should I should be grateful towards the person who stitched my clothes. I should be grateful towards the milkman. I should be grateful towards the cow. I should be grateful towards the vegetable seller. We should be grateful towards everybody. Therefore, we should be grateful towards the society. And for that, we have to serve the society. If by chance the society gets evil, it does not mean that we also join the society and remain evil. We should bring the society out of evil practices like smoking, drinking, ityadi. And we should try to show our gratefulness to the society in maybe by praying for the welfare of all. Sanatana Dharma always teaches us that we should not seek only our own welfare. We should seek the welfare of all. So we should seek welfare of the society. Okay. What about the entire world? Can I say that I am dependent on the entire world? Today there is globalization. It is possible to say. But let us say a thousand years ago. Were people really dependent on the entire world? Uh, not the human population of the entire world maybe. But on the earth, yes. Because the oceans, land masses, everything, the weather, climate, on Bhumi itself. We have been dependent and we are still dependent. We are creatures living on earth. So we are dependent on earth. Can I desire freedom from the world? Can I live elsewhere? You know, people are trying to see if we can live on the moon, we can live on the Mars, whatever. As per Sanatana Dharma, there are other habitable lokas, correct? There is Indra Loka, Chandra Loka, there is what? Uh, Bhuva Loka, uh, Mahaloka, Jana Loka, Tapa Loka, Satya Loka, Atala Vitala Sutaladi. So many Lokas are there. 14 Lokas here itself, within this under itself we have. So, there are different Lokas. Can I desire freedom from the earth and seek, let us say, Indra Loka? Would it be dharmic or would it be adharmic? Would it be righteous or would it be unrighteous? It need not necessarily be unrighteous, but it is not the best possible thing that I can desire. When I have an opportunity to desire a totally disease-free world, and I instead desire for corona-free world, that too for a single year. Technically, I am desiring a very good thing. I am desiring a very good thing. I want the world to be free from corona for the entire year. That is a great desire. But there are far, far, far superior desires that I could have. And if I am not having them, it means maybe I am not that intelligent. Maybe I am not that mature. So, for those who seek freedom from the entire world, what is the purpose behind it? What is it that they want to achieve? Is there something superior that can be achieved? That is what we should see. Freedom from all kinds of pain. Pain is divided into three types. I believe it has already been discussed before. Adhyatmika, Adi Daivika, Adi Bhautika. It is called Dukhatraya or Tapatraya. Doesn't matter how it is called. But it is a form of pain. We have mental pain. Sometimes we feel sad. We feel hurt. 
sometimes there is physical pain we get injured we get wounded things happen is it okay to desire freedom from all kinds of pain yes absolutely it is absolutely okay to desire freedom from all kinds of pain now by this point maybe a question arises what are you saying it is okay to have this desire it is okay to desire one kind of bondage. It is okay to desire to be responsible. It is okay to honor certain relationships. It is good to desire to help the society. It is... So, are we saying that desire is good? Does Sanatana Dharma not say that all desires are bad? Stay away from all desires. Sanatana Dharma says that, right? Stay immune to all desires. Do not have any desire. What does that statement mean? The Acharyas of Vishishta Advaita, that is, the teachers from Advars and later the Acharyas up to Bhagavad Ramanuja and beyond him up to today, what have they been teaching? They have been teaching that we should leave those desires that take us away from Bhagavan. We should leave those desires that take us away from Bhagavan. I'll give you a simple example. Let us... Yes? Okay. Let us get back to Advaita. Adi Shankaracharya says there is something called Sadhana Chatushtayam. There are four sadhanas that you need to do if you want to get moksha. One of those is called mumukshutvam. One of those sadhanas is the desire to get moksha. He says it is a requirement. Now, how can you say that you should have a desire? Shankaracharya said you should desire moksha. Shouldn't he be saying you should not have any desire at all? But he has said, no, you should desire moksha. Why? Because moksha is a state where you do not have any desire. So, even if you want to leave all desires, that itself, wanting to leave all desires, itself would become a desire. For that reason, in Vishishta Advaita, they have very clearly explained, anything and everything that takes you for, uh, further away from Bhagavan. Do not desire it. Anything and everything that could take you closer to Bhagavan, it is okay to desire it. It is good to desire it. Okay. So now we were talking about pain. We said it is okay to desire to be free from pain. Why? Oh, I have so much pain. If not for the pain, I would have gone and looted my neighbors and earned money. That way? No. Assuming there is a greater level of dharma, there is a greater contribution to dharma that we could give from our side. If not for the pain, we should seek definitely freedom from pain. Pain is something that comes to us due to papa karma. We should desire to stop doing papa karma. Therefore, we are indirectly desiring to become free from all kinds of pain. So that freedom has been explained. What about freedom from the cycle of birth and death? Desiring freedom from the cycle of birth and death is a very, very great quality. It is a very great quality. Why do people desire it? Why do the saintly people desire it? They desire it because in the cycle of birth and death, there is less freedom. We are bound by karma. We are bound by maya. We are made ignorant. We are made to become people who are not as close to Bhagavan as we could be. We are made to be in situations where out of ignorance, we take wrong decisions. 
we end up being in situations where there is pain. Should we not get out of all of these? Yes, we should. Therefore, it has been said that one should seek freedom from the cycle of birth and death. As a matter of fact, that is what comes under Mumukshutvam, wanting to reach the state of moksha, where moksha is a state where there is no cycle of birth and death. There you are not bound by it. What about freedom from existence itself? As per the Vedas, as per the Vedas, Atma is eternal. Now, which Atma in Vishishtadvaita you have said there is a Jivatma and Paramatma. Which Atma is eternal? Both are eternal. Therefore, all Atman are eternal. Can, we, can I desire to stop existing? Existing in this form as a human? Okay. Existing on earth? Okay. We already saw that. But existing as an Atma itself, the actual existence itself, can I stop existing altogether? In some schools, they said that existence itself is a lie. You realize it, then when, once you die, your existence also disappears. Some other people said, even if you don't realize it, that is a truth. You die, there is no reality. That's it. Only illusion. Only ignorance. Existence is a lie. Some people said. But the Vedas have disagreed. Vedanta disagrees. In Vedanta, we unitedly disagree. So, Shankaracharya believes in Atma, Ramanujacharya believes in Atma, Madhvacharya believes in Atma. We do not seek freedom from existence because that is not possible. Existence is a fundamental nature. Bondage to Bhagavan is a fundamental nature. If we desire freedom from our fundamental nature, it means we are stupid. Because we will never get freedom from it, firstly. Secondly, whether or not we know that it is possible, there is no point in desiring it because there is nothing that you gain out of it. If you desire something, it should give you some benefit, right? It should take you to a better level. Such a level is theoretically not possible, hypothetically also not possible. Therefore, we should not desire it. So, this is what we need to understand about what we should be free from, what we need not desire to be free from and what we should not desire to be free from. Having said that, let me move on to freedom to. Some people say they want the freedom to learn everything. Basically, if they learn everything, they will know everything. But there are both advantages and disadvantages. Maybe if they know everything. Remember, I am talking about knowing, not realizing. Maybe if they know everything, they could do much better. If I know how to treat heart patients, I can treat heart patients. Correct? If I know how to help people, I can help people. Here and there, knowledge is very useful. But who is it useful for? Knowledge is a tool. Knowledge is useful for those people who are seeking to do things good with that knowledge. Good things with that knowledge. If I desire to do bad things with that knowledge, that knowledge will not really be useful to me. I might even create the atomic bomb. But I will only incur bad karma. I will not get good karma from it. Whether I cite Krishna or read Bhagavad Gita is not going to matter there. Hmm? Even after reading Bhagavad Gita, if what I create is an instrument of utter destruction, even if by chance I discover it by accident, I should not reveal it to the world. 
but anyway so knowing has its own pros and cons suppose you know suppose you have come to know a lot of things but you are bound by somebody else and that person your boss or whoever your master forces you to use your knowledge for bad things in this case you are a good hearted person but your knowledge is still being used in a bad way so freedom to know everything is not something that we should desire we should seek we should seek the freedom to know everything by learning in the appropriate way at the appropriate time given that the knowledge would be used by us in an appropriate manner that is how we should seek otherwise if you teach a random student if you create an online course how to create a nuclear weapon then even a terrorist might learn from you and use it tomorrow we don't want to teach brahmastra to ashwatthama the way his father taught it so had ashwatthama been a purely dharmic person he would not have wanted to learn everything that arjuna learned so the desire to be the best right wanting to be the best that wanting to be the best is good but only as long as it is in line with the dharmic principles so there are certain things that we should not try to know if a kindergarten kid demands that he should be taught some phd level material let us say nuclear fission i don't know if it is phd level it is probably i don't know these days it is high school level or college level undergraduate level but should you really teach it probably not so there are things that should be taught to people there are levels right step by step procedure first you clear kindergarten first you learn abc after that you can learn bore on carbon and so on first you learn simple things b for ball c for cat you learn that first so go step by step a person who desires to skip all the steps i will not go and follow the steps i will not seek a guru i will not study the veda in a formal manner i will not bother to learn the scriptures properly but i will come and comment on the scriptures anything and everything that i like we see a lot of people doing it on social media there are people who can't even name the four vedas properly but who will give lectures on what sanatana dharma teaches what the vedas teach what are they really doing maybe they are showing off but if they want to be at the level of knowing everything if they truly desire it then they have to follow the steps so wanting to know everything has one more problem wanting to know things instantly if there are steps some steps will take time it takes time to learn the scripture it is a fact you cannot watch 10 youtube videos of somebody and then come and preach online and comment on anybody and everybody that is a very inappropriate thing to do that is not only inappropriate if when people get misguided i will get bad karma if i behave that way on top of that it is not going to help me in any way also even if other people don't get misguided even if nobody listens to me even if everybody who listens to me forgets what i have said if what i have said is not based on authentic knowledge that has been gained by me i wanted to learn everything but i wanted to learn instantly therefore i went and tried to find instant solutions i googled summarize the veda in once i went to chat gpt i said summarize entire bhagavad gita in one sentence it told me something i don't know what it told me i let us assume that it says something then i used this sentence and started saying this is what bhagavad gita teaches this is what bhagavad gita teaches everywhere i started saying i think i know but do i really know most probably i don't furthermore the scriptures have said that if we don't get 
vidya from formal sources acharya eva has said the veda veda has said that way veda has said you should learn only from you should have vidya only from acharya likewise in itihasas and puranas also be it shiva be it vishnu be it some other maharshi everybody says the same thing so the freedom to know everything is also a little tricky at the state of moksha we will have complete knowledge so we should seek the state of moksha yes therefore we have the freedom to attain the state of knowing everything but the approach that we have towards it should be dharmic that is the point here what about the freedom to do everything no whatever i do may be good whatever i do may be bad if it is bad i will get papa karma if it is good i will get punya karma i can't do anything and everything as i please oh but krishna said yatha ichhasi tatha kuru krishna said it not because he gave a choice to arjuna krishna said it because he knew that arjuna is going to take the right decision when krishna says yatha ichhasi tatha kuru it does not mean that no matter what arjuna does he will get only good result krishna has already said oh arjuna it is your duty to fight the war if you go and fight the war you will get good result if you don't do it then if you think that your choice is otherwise and if you decide to not fight the war then you will get a bad state your future will be bad so krishna has has he really given a choice he says yatha ichhasi tatha kuru we do have the right to we have the freedom to do anything and everything but we will not have the freedom to change the consequences of what we do so if we do good we will get good paropakara punyaya papaya paripidana so if we do bad yes paripidana we will have to bear the consequences so that should be kept in mind what about the freedom to live as we please well they say sanatana dharma is a way of life which way of life no no there are different ways of life how many ways of life no different schools say different things then why did you call it a way of life no you can live in any way you want just make sure that you are a good person is that what sanatana dharma is no sanatana dharma does not really say that sanatana dharma says yes you should be good to all but if you do only punya you will get only swarga and swarga will be temporary swarga is not permanent therefore yes you can live a bad life today and go to naraka tomorrow you can live a bad life today and harm yourself today also and harm yourself in uh, after life also but is that the correct thing to do no because the consequences will be bad that is why krishna says in gita you should live in a satvik manner satvik people are the greatest live in a satvik way speak in a satvik way think in a satvik way so use only satvik thoughts use only satvik words we see a lot of people we see people even among vaishnavas or people who have taken diksha from vaishnava paramparas or people who have not even taken diksha or are calling themselves vaishnavas we see people everywhere even people who do not associate themselves with vaishnavas doesn't matter in all communities in all types of people we do see some people who do not have a proper satvik behavior that is a very sad thing and it is probably because the parents are not teaching them properly they are not enforcing it properly but we cannot do anything about it these days parents don't even know what their children do once their children go online on social media what are the children doing parents don't know once the children go to school or maybe from school during lunch time they go outside or from college during a lunch time they go outside or they bunk a lecture the parents might not even know about it there are cases where parents know there are many cases where parents don't know this excessive freedom that is granted to the children leads them 
to go to bad practices because they are not mature enough. Some end up learning how to smoke and get addicted to it. Some learn how to drink liquor and get addicted to it. These kinds of bad things are also associated with freedom. So freedom should be given appropriately based on the level of maturity and character and qualification of the person. If we don't give freedom based on these things, we would have a very bad future in the society. What about the freedom to be? Can I be whoever I want? You know, there are some people who say, uh, uh, I am a Brahmana when I uh, uh, do puja. I am a Kshatriya when I... Uh, I am a I am a Kshatriya when I take up weapons to defend my homeland. I am a uh, Vaishya uh, when I uh, go to do work in the office. And I am a Shudra when I clean my home. There are people who say that. Is that how the Varnas are really defined? No, the Varnas are not defined that way. People think whatever they like. They think if you do puja, you are a brahmana. That is not so. Anybody, any person of any varna can do puja. That does not mean that doing puja creates a brahmana. Brahmana is different. Kshatriya is different. It is not something that, oh, I decide to do this in the morning, I become this. In that case, Arjuna could have said, oh, Krishna, I have the freedom to be whoever I want. From this moment onwards, I am a Vaishya. Therefore, I am going to trade with other people. I would like to trade my Gandiva and other weapons with the Kauravas. I will take a lot of money from them and I will go. I don't want to fight them. That would have been nonsensical. So, freedom to be whoever we want? No. There is a restriction. There is a dharmic restriction. There is a logical restriction. There is a restriction based on our past karma also. I cannot desire to be an alien in this life. Why? Because I am a human. Simple. I don't have the freedom to be. It is not even possible. What if I think of myself as something that I am not? Do I have the freedom to identify myself as something that I am biologically not? I could say whatever I want. I could believe in whatever I want. But if I am believing in lies, then I am becoming ignorant. I should remember that. So, no matter how we want to be identified, who we are, is not necessarily going to be the same. What we would like to be identified as. We should always think about who we are. I should think, who am I? I should not think, how do I want to be identified? There is a difference there. If I think I want to be identified as a rich person, I might end up stealing. So, there is a difference in identification also for the common man. What about the saint? Can a saint say, I want to be identified as a stone? No, that, that is also nonsensical. Even if you have great powers, even if you have the ability to become a stone, should you really become a stone without a purpose? What is the purpose? What are you achieving? That is again a question. What about the freedom to be ourselves? No matter what others say or feel. Again, if others are giving us good advice, we should take it. If others are feeling hurt, and this, this hurt is unwarranted. I say unwarranted for a valid reason. Hurting people is not always wrong. Rama hurt Ravana. It was not wrong. Rama hurt Ravana and it was not wrong. Why? Because Ravana was evil and he deserved to get hurt. So, a person who deserves to get hurt can be hurt by a person who is qualified to hurt. Rama was qualified to hurt Ravana. He had all the rights to do it. His wife was literally kidnapped by Ravana. Therefore, he had the right. He had the moral right. Even otherwise, Ravana was a very evil person. He was tormenting all the worlds. All of that is explained in Ramayana. Can I be myself no matter what others say or feel? Let others say, let Vibhishana say whatever I want. I will be myself. 
it is okay to be yourself no matter what others say or feel if you are already dharmic and already perfect but nobody is perfect everybody is dharmic only to some extent maybe i am 10% dharmic maybe i am 30% dharmic maybe i am 90% dharmic 100% dharmic i don't know if i start believing that i am 100% dharmic i will get arrogant it will be called as arrogance so we should always have a level of humility and want to listen to what others say maybe they have something good for us maybe they are being rude to us maybe they are speaking in a very impolite way maybe they are speaking in an insultful way but if they have something good for us we should think about it so we should not run behind a freedom to be totally free so there are some people who say true friends are those who accept you for who you are what does that mean if i if i decide to become a terrorist and my friend says oh it is very good please remain a terrorist i am totally fine with it is he really a good friend no he will encourage me to remain in a bad path and attain naraka and even harm the world and society so that is not how we should be a true friend should stop me from doing wrong even if i feel something bad about him even if i get angry on him that is how a true friend should be so true friends are not who accept us for who we are true friends are those who desire the good for us no matter who we are so these are the three types of freedom that i wanted to talk about because we say india is independent we say we are free but we should understand that there are limitations of freedom at a moral level at a logical level and at a dharmic level that is what i wanted to highlight today i hope uh, i hope uh, i have been able to convey things in a way that has been understood by the listeners if there is any question or doubt please feel free to let me thank you vira raghav and it was very clear i have one question or clarification in the context of uh, people who work in secret agency and all you know or people who have to find new weapons uh, to fight terrorism or to fight the war so i mean we can't say that they are doing wrong because somebody has to do that so that is my clarification or question there there it depends on the nature of the weapon okay if my enemy is a government okay let us say my enemy is the government of japan should i want the rulers of japan to get attacked or should i want the the entire cities of japan to get attacked what kind of weapon should i want to develop if i have one enemy is it okay for me to punish an entire population just because i have one enemy how is it fair so it is not wrong to develop weapons but you should use them appropriately there are plenty of ways to use okay you can, oh, but, you can i, I am I clear have... clear on that but what is the karmic consequence of that person because somebody has to do that job you know somebody has to develop that new weapon okay let us say only for uh, purpose of uh, fighting the, the war people. not the population i already told you or, or secret agent he has to work as a secret agent go and find this or that is an exceptional it. case that is permitted by dharma for secret agent but in the case oh, of okay dharma for secret agent okay it is there it is it is mentioned in the scriptures okay secret oh i see guys they are all mentioned in the scriptures Uh, vidura gives a lecture okay. to dhritarashtra on how to maintain spice also you can see it in mahabharata also so oh, okay <laughs> anyway. so they are people who have to do that profession there is some dharma for that okay so yes but there are do's and don'ts for them there are do's and don'ts for how to maintain them that is what we say so you can be a oh, weapon yeah. creator, but somebody has to create a weapon no no somebody has to create a weapon that surpasses the enemy but nobody yeah. has to create a weapon that but destroys not, the world yeah. <laughs> i got the clarity thank you that so is... much it was better correct right. okay thank you for attending you were so wonderful for the post bhasi shivas raghav guru sthanam tatasya vidya vapya vibhuddho uttam tam dadhanam purve stah hari gurum karuna karakhyam akminath samarambha nakhyam namadhyam smadacharya paryantam
वंदे गुरु परम परम श्रीमती रामानुजाय नम श्रीमती निगमांत महादेशकाय नम थैंक यू फॉर अटेंडिंग